welcome to this interview today. It's exciting to get to do it again. Um, if you've been watching it all, you know Mike Johnson by now. Mike, welcome. Thanks right. for coming back. Yep. Uh, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Mike is the uh, superintendent of the Crestwell School District. Anything, any news or anything happening around our state that we need to be aware of? Well, our district and our state, I, I just have to emphasize how much I appreciate the staff and, and the patience of the parents during these times. Um, but uh, I am so impressed and amazed by our staff and the way they've taken this challenge on and have created opportunities for, for our kids and our community. Um, as I mentioned in the last interview, you know, the leadership of the district, you know, when we got together and, and decided to face this head on and, and make some moves to, to connect with kids and families, um, there was nothing holding us back. And, and we just went right after it. And, uh, you know, each of the principals, our directors at the district level, I mean, just phenomenal people. And then once we handed it to the teachers, they took care of the business. They took mm -hmm. care of kids. And, uh, and it's been like that mm -hmm. from the get-go. But, um, you know, I, I attend a lot of meetings in a week. And uh, one of those meetings is uh, across, uh, it's a superintendent's meeting across the state. And, you know, some, some districts are really struggling to get this thing going. And in fact, uh, there are districts out there that just, uh, they, they just began distance learning this week. And um, I don't know, you know, what, what their challenges have been. I know there are many challenges with this. Mm -hmm. So I, I empathize uh, with them, but, uh, but I just, it's just, I, I mean, our, our staff, our district has done so much uh, to continue with educating our kids and providing care for them. And I, I just can't thank them enough, really. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah, and I'm thrilled. Uh, you know, at my house, uh, our 10th grader uh, begrudgingly does his homework, uh, but uh, he knows that there's requirements. And so and that's been going on for several weeks now. So a lot of, a lot of congratulations to the school district. And I want to introduce you today to, to the guest that Mike has brought with him. It's Adam Watkins the principal at the high school. Welcome. Great. Thanks for having me, Doug. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Love Absolutely. being here. And I really enjoy hearing that your um, your grandson in your home hasn't changed his work habits there as he was, you know, sometimes at our school. He, he He's a great young man, but even needed a little prodding there. Every so. once in a while. It hasn't changed, so it's maybe, good to hear. Maybe every five minutes. Or so. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, you know, as we've talked for the last uh, few weeks, one of the, the big thing was the, the, the change, if not really drastically different, but the way that the school district tweaked the mission mm -hmm. of connecting with the students, mm -hmm. uh, showing how much you care for the students, and then helping them to learn. I, I need to know how's that going from the high school perspective? You know, it's going really good. And, and Mike mentioned, and, and due to his leadership, has been outstanding uh, in how we've adjusted to that. And I'll be honest, when I we came on, I came on a couple of years ago, that was my focus. My focus was connecting with kids and community and building the relationships and building culture. Um, academics, you always look at how you're going to improve, but really the change agent is when you have students and families understand mm -hmm. that you are there to care about them and that you want to connect with them. And I think we've done that really well in the last couple of years at Crestwell High School. Uh, the culture's completely changed. Um, kids love being there. They love the events. They're showing up. They have a lot of pride. Um, whether it's me leading them in a bulldog stomp or whatever it might be, uh, it's been an awesome opportunity. Um, this, I think, has been an interesting situation because I would say the structures that we put in place the last couple of years really lean towards being successful in this environment as, much, as best as possible. Um, we put in some structures around how we're going to talk about kids and how we're going to support them early on and trained our staff over the last couple of years. And so when this occurred, as I mentioned to Mike, we already had those structures in place. And so what we did is we just kind of moved the timetable up of how often. So we were typically meeting about once a month to talk about kids in these kind of social and emotional issues and how we need to connect with them in different ways, including academics. And we moved it to every week now. And it was an easy transition for us because it was it was already there. And um, that's been awesome. We met just yesterday morning to talk about kids once again. And the focus is always about, are we connecting? What are the, the barriers that are there? How can we help them overcome them? What are we hearing from our parents? Um, what do we need to do to adjust? Because it's not having them adjust, it's about us adjusting. 
Uh, and so that's always been a focus for us is uh, making sure our kids are healthy and well. Um, we had an unfortunate circumstance over the summer happen with a student and that was devastating for us. And because of the connection we had built, there was a lot of trust put into us as a high school. Uh, me as an administrator with the students and families of how to, how to care for that. We continue to care for that. We connect with those kids all the time and saying, hey, how are you doing? This is maybe a milestone of an event. You know, are you doing okay? Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, that's an ongoing kind of process. Good. And I'm assuming that, that you're talking about that tragedy that we had of an yeah, accidental death yeah. that, that affected everybody. Yeah, in it was tragic, you know, such a wonderful young man mm -hmm. and amazing family and it impacted tremendously our students and our staff and our community. And I, I will say that it still does, but every day is a little bit better, you know, and I know that when I talk to those students, I actually driving here, saw two of the, the young ladies walking the street and stopped for a second, said hi to them, it was great to see their faces, and they seem to be doing better. And it's always, and every conversation we've had about, um, you know, every day will be a little bit better for you and you'll, and you'll feel stronger with it and you'll be able to move forward but never forgetting. And we've also been able to tie resources in for them through different outside rate agencies in the sense that our nonprofit to provide those supports if they want them. Yeah. And that's been a focus for us. Good. Um, last year, I had a senior at the house and, yeah. and this time of year, it was all about making sure the cap and gown is ready, making yeah. sure <laughs> we got all the timetable yeah. for the big party the night of graduation and, and that everything is this rite of passage. Yeah, yeah. So tell us what's going on with that this year. Yeah, so you know, if there's anything that I've probably lost, lost more sleep on lately, it's about how do we celebrate our seniors and how do we continue to provide this such a wonderful opportunity. Um, we received some direction and guidance from the governor on graduation all, all about four weeks ago, at least the initial one. And um, it was like, oh my goodness, we've got to completely change our thoughts and process of how we're going to do this and how are we going to really celebrate um, 13 years sometimes, you know, kindergarten and so forth of um, students' progression to this moment. And uh, we formed a graduation committee with a lot of stakeholders, had a lot of conversations with Mike. Um, just as Mike is, is on uh, meetings constantly with superintendents, uh, we've been connecting as high school principals across the state um, every Thursday night, and I would say a little over 100 principals at different high schools, a variation from large to mm -hmm. small, yeah. talk about these things and how can we generate ideas. And um, then the governor clarified some expectations this just last week about what that might be. And I think we have a really solid plan. I'm really excited about the opportunity that we're presenting. Um, I was on a Zoom meeting actually uh, Monday with our senior parents for those that wanted to be there and describe the plan and they seem to be very uh, appreciative of the efforts. Mm -hmm. And our hope is um, the week of graduation, mm -hmm. which we still have June 5th as our, our, as our graduation night, is during the week we're going to send out communication to the families and have designated times that uh, the senior and some members of their family can come to the school and um, actually be videoed doing their graduation walk, receive their diploma. We have two different photo ops of a, of a, a picture gallery kind of thing with their senior logo that they chose mm -hmm. with all their names and then in front of the Spirit Rock as well. And then that will all be, be uh, put into the graduation video that will be mm -hmm. sent out to all the families. And many of them, of course, have family all over the nation. Sure. So they'll be able to access that too. It won't be live, but um, we've been able to, we feel, simulate as close as we can, uh, maintaining the social distance parameters we've been given to provide the best experience possible. And it's, and it's still about a closure experience. We're still gonna have our seniors that would have given speeches, give their speeches there. We're gonna still provide those vows and sal medals. We're still gonna, uh, I'm still gonna welcome everyone and uh, give a closing remark. We're still gonna have, and I appreciate uh, Sandy Green, our music director, She's going to get a creative um, multiple, and I don't know how she's going to do it, but I know she'll pull it off because she's amazing, um, um, collage of every um, instrument player playing their part of pomp and circumstance <laughs> and put it all together, even though they won't be in the same room doing it. Cool. And so we'll that, have that for, uh, producing. And I think what's really interesting about it, unlike a lot of times of graduation ceremonies, they're going to have this um, 
memento yeah. of a memory that they'll always have now on video mm -hmm. and they will be able to take back and look at it and remember it and um, it's not of course what we wanted for their, our seniors we know that we know what they've lost um, we are continuing to try to find ways to celebrate them and to acknowledge them um, but we think this is the closest we can get uh, in the sense of the social distancing to give them that experience. Ooh, that sounds wonderful. Yeah, we're excited I, about it. I've actually uh, been able to watch some of the, uh, the the work that the students are doing on this type of thing, the putting the music together. Yeah. And I've seen some of and I don't know how they do it, but it works. Know. Yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty amazing. amazing. It is. I, I think you'll love what they put together. Yeah. That's cool to know. Thanks for sharing yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's uh, I even had a, a senior parent ask me, uh, you know, what's going to happen? I said, I don't know, but I'm going to I'm going to ask Adam. Yeah, and I appreciate that because actually really, I have really appreciated the collaboration with Mike. We just discussed this, to be honest, Friday last week when we finally got the final um, kind of guidelines from the, uh, the governor. And we had been thinking of this idea. And when we kind of put it to place, Mike was like, that sounds awesome. Let's go for it. And then literally the next day, day, I was able to share that. Yeah. And as I promised our senior parents and my se our seniors, I was going to connect with them by the latest middle of this month mm -hmm. with the exact plan. And, and we're ready to roll that out. We wanted to make sure our school board also was aware of it uh, so that they could be supportive of our decisions and things we're doing. And we're ready to go forward now. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks. Way to go. Let me change the subject a little bit. I know that high school age students um, sometimes have more of a struggle with their social emotional health. Yeah. Um, I know the second part of the mission is to, to care for those kids. How's the high school going at this approach of helping kids yeah. that are really struggling this way? Yeah, so you know, I would say that high school is, besides middle school, can be really crazy. Um, their yeah. hormones and everything with those kids. Uh, high school is definitely that place where students are starting to push their boundaries of who they are personally, mm -hmm. emotionally, mentally, and explore those. And you're, you're really, that's one of our jobs as educators at the high school is to help guide and, and mold that in the sense of, of their interest in what they're doing. Um, what I would say is what we're doing is our focus has been from day one and really, once again, support from Mike um, with a consistent message that we're here to support our students' social emotional well-being through all of this. Mm -hmm. um, that continues to be the focus. Um, everything my staff hears from me is about, it's not about academic, academic, academic. It's about how are you doing? How are things going? What can we mm -hmm. do to support you? Um, are there issues that we need to know about that we can talk about and get other resources through our district? Whether it's the McKinney Vento specialist, our family resource coordinator, um, our counselor, Lori Noggle, who's amazing. Um, all those different things. Lori actually put together a great PowerPoint that we posted on the district website as well as sent out to families and it's on our school website of steps and things to consider about resources and things and she did a great job with that. And those are the initial conversations always. And then it's like, hey, by the way, your grandson, we need that assignment from you. You know, because we want learning to happen because we know when students are engaged in learning, they're also distracted from sometimes those other mm -hmm. things. And it goes back to getting into some of those routines. Mm -hmm. And whether people know it or not, kids want routine. They want structure. They want to know that they're going to still have that adult in front of them that cares about them, that's connected to them. And when you provide that, they're being so much more successful. Mm -hmm. uh, so that continues to be the focus. Mm -hmm. um, I just had a conversation with my staff uh, yesterday morning. and. All the conversations were, hey, we're not getting this, we're not getting that work from them. And I reminded them, okay, but how are they doing? Mm -hmm. You know, how are they responding? Are they connecting with you? Yes. Then we're accomplishing our goal. And that's very aligned with uh, the, the, the state too. When they, they listed four priorities, and I know Mike's talked about that. The fourth was curriculum. The first three were all about social emotional well-being. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, that's continued to be our focus. And I love how our staff has shifted. Um, we've had some amazing deep conversations about supporting kids and really changing our philosophy and focus of mm -hmm. academics. I'll be honest, my classified staff, I wish I could take them anywhere I go because whether it's Cresswell or somewhere else, they are amazing. Um, they have gone above and beyond. Mm -hmm. um, they've 
went up, up, up on their own and basically adopted, you know, like 10 kids each and said, I'm going to check in with these kids daily yeah. and make sure they're doing okay. And how could I support them? Um, they actually, it's teacher appreciation week. And I want to shout out to my teachers because yeah. they're awesome. Um, they amongst themselves created, um, kind of a swag bag and gift stuff and they delivered them to all their houses, no matter where they lived, you know, and we have several, as Mike knows of our staff that don't live in Cresswell. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, for, you know, Eugene, yeah. Springfield, um, Cottage Grove, there's some that, that, that are far out there and they delivered them and they're just amazing. And I'm just fortunate and lucky to work with such passionate and caring um, adults and educators. Glad to hear that. Yeah. Um, I know that uh, when my daughter entered college, she entered um, almost as a sophomore yeah. because of the, the early college credit that, that credit. was available yeah. there. How has that changed with all of this that's going on now? To be honest, not a lot. Um, the only thing that's really changed is the face-to-face the -face interaction, direct instruction. Mm -hmm. Um, we've been partnering very closely with Willamette Promise, um, who is partnered with Western Oregon and OIT, as you know, as well as Lane Community College, Darren Ford, who's the coordinator for um, extended learning for them. And they've been amazing. Um, they've been having constant communications, uh, whether it's uh, in our Elevate Lane County or um, Career Technical Education Committees that I serve on. Um, they're there always talking about how can we support, how can we adjust, and they've been in direct communication with us too and our teachers to say, hey, this is what we were doing. Maybe we need to shift and change a little bit here and there. But the nice thing is it's still meeting the standards that were required. So the expectation of the output might be a little different, but the learning's still the mm -hmm. same. And um, AP hasn't been any different with that. The change has been the test. Um, the, ch the test is really online now and a much shorter test. Mm -hmm. And actually that testing starts next week. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how we go. <laughs> um, and I would say that the thing that would ha that might have been a little different is we've had a little less participation from students because their, their fear of, of maybe not being as successful. Mm -hmm. um, I've been able to jump into some of those classes though and hopefully reassure them that they have nothing to lose, nothing at all. You know, there's a little fee and if, the, if it's about financial, we'll, we'll help support that. We have scholarship opportunities. But they have only to gain by doing well or trying. Um, a lot of times it's not even about the score, it's about the effort. And data shows that you just doing that shows that you're completing something and you'll do better in your next step. And so I would say our teachers have really adapted and any student that wants to pursue that dual credit or college opportunity is still being provided it. And so that's been great. Okay. I know your vocational classes, yeah. those like, you know, welding or, or, or woodwork or yeah. those kind of things are, those are so hands on. Oh, yeah. How's that? Adapted? Yeah. I wish I could say that like Liz Babs, our welding teacher is going around house to house and welding with kids. <laughs> She's not. Um, or our construction teacher, Way Linnaeus, who's amazing, is, is going and building, mm -hmm. you know, houses with people. Um, what I loved is that immediately they got really creative and they created kits. Um, both our, our fine arts teacher with ceramics and drawing and graphics arts and our construction woods. And they created kits where students could have them at home for projects and they could still be learning the essential skills they needed and then break it down and rebuild something else, you know, and they got really good about that. You know, it was yeah. like, hey, here's a kit. It's almost like those chemistry kits you used to buy, you yeah. know, uh -huh. and say, hey, here's one project. Now break it all down and redo something different. And so it's been, a, of course, a trial mm -hmm. and it's been a struggle, but they've really risen above <laughs> the task. And um, we were able to distribute um, projects back to kids this week, mm -hmm. actually. And um, everything I've heard is that things are going well. You know, um, is it what we want? No, yeah. but we're adapting, they're adapting, and the learning is still happening, which is what's important. Cool, cool, that's good. Yeah. Um, well, every, every once in a while we see the football lights on. Uh, over over at the field at the high school, what's going yeah. on with all that? We just we felt like we should just waste energy. You know, no. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> um, you know, this was a movement that was done by um, across the nation as well as in our state with athletic directors that wanted to continue to honor our seniors in this. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest losses besides graduation was our athletes and activity groups that were losing out on the opportunity for spring. Uh, you know, we had some state champions that were going to be running track this year as a senior. Yeah. Uh, we had a, a new baseball coach that isn't going to be able to even have a baseball season and softball coach. Mm -hmm. 
And what a huge loss. And so this was a way, and Brandon Standard, our AD, who's an amazing, amazing administrator, um, partnered and listened and came up with this idea with others to um, turn on the football lights every, um, it was initially every Friday, and to um, honor and recognize our seniors, our senior athletes. Um, Mike and I and Brandon talked, and we actually thought it'd be a great idea to not just honor our senior athletes, but to also honor our seniors. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to do it twice a week. And so it's every Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Friday. And then on the scoreboard, you see the 2020 all mm -hmm. over, recognizing their class. And it's been uh, an ongoing thing. Brandon goes down there every night himself, turns them on. I'm glad he only lives five <laughs> minutes away, yeah. you know, so he can do that. Um, we've had kids go every time and recognize that and honor and mm -hmm. it's been almost a, a ritual for them you know they're maintaining social distancing <laughs> um and we don't have more than 25 so that's good yeah. but it's been awesome and it's just one more thing that we're trying to do to say we understand what you've lost we appreciate that and we want you to show how much we care about you uh, we're doing that through our senior parents our senior parents have organized three to four different things that they're doing the first thing they did, and I know they've already done it, is they sign bombed all of the yeah. seniors' uh, yards with signage, and they're doing three other. And I'm not going to say what they are because they're secrets, you know. And okay. I, I'll get in trouble, and I don't like to be in trouble by senior parents. And um, we are also doing something with the city to recognize our seniors with some banner stuff on Main Street, so you'll see that soon. And then we're doing some things, as I said, at graduation to kind of honor them awesome. with that. So. Awesome. I love the innovation. That's, yeah. That, that's neat. So when people are, you have problems and you just figure out ways. What words of encouragement would you give our parents of seniors as they get ready to end one part of their life and yet yeah. as they enter what I consider to be like the, the next most exciting thing coming? Yeah. What would, what Them leaving? Mean? Yeah. No, yeah. No. <laughs> um, you know, being a, a parent who's had seniors as well, Mike can actually add to this. Um, I would say try to just Take every moment you can with them. Enjoy the moments because they're soon going to move on. And then and they're going to be adult children and that changes how you have them there, or how you interact. And know that every opportunity that comes up uh, that we present, please take it. Please embrace with it. Um, I just want to tell them how much I've appreciated their support. Um, I know that it hasn't gone the way we want. And um, I do understand that. This is my last year at Crestville. It's not my the way I wanted, mm -hmm. you know, to say goodbye. But we have to adapt and we have to change. And I would say that's a, an important thing that's been good for our seniors too, mm -hmm. is helping them understand that you can't control your all the circumstance in your life, and you have to pick yourself up, and you have mm -hmm. to dust yourself off, and you have to adapt. And they have, you know, we had some seniors who were like, "I'm done," and like, "Yeah, you're done." I mean, I actually, yeah. and I appreciated Mike. <laughs> With the support of this, uh, I called every single senior and had a, a Zoom connect with them and congratulated them for finishing. Mm -hmm. And after it was done, I, I had some go, really, that's it? We're done? And, and I'm like, yeah. And they go, yeah. And, and then I had someone that stopped and paused and went, wait a second, I'm done? And I'm like, yeah, you're really done? Like, oh. Yeah. And it started to hit them. Sure. And we know actually during this time of year, you'll see mm -hmm. it where a lot of our seniors start regressing back to about, wait a second, I don't want to be done because I'm uncertain yeah. of where I'm doing or where I'm going, and it's scary. This feels good. And I would just continue to tell our parents that your children are starting to feel that and just continue yeah. to be the great parents you are, continue to support them, encourage them to engage in the things we're doing mm -hmm. to provide that closure and know that they're going to be great. They're going to go off to do amazing things. Bob, I, do you have something to add to that, Mike? Um, I, well, I, I'll just reiterate what Adam has said. You know, we, we have some very gracious parents. Mm -hmm. they, they really support our schools, and that's the long history of Cresswell, is the, the community support of the schools. And in this situation, I think what really has given us some momentum is the support that we're getting in our schools right now at this time from our parents. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like we're getting roadblocks or we're hitting people who are, are really complaining about the the effort that we're putting forward to make this happen. Yeah. It's quite the reverse. We're, we're getting a lot of um, notes and, and words of appreciation from our, from our parents. And uh, our senior parents, I just, you know, I feel 
feel bad about the situation uh, that we're in, but um, you know we're we're all working hard to make the best of it. And I think Adam and Brandon have put together a great plan uh, mm -hmm. to send our seniors off in the right way. Is it a perfect way? I, none of this is. Yeah. <laughs> and it's very fluid, but we're getting better at it as we go. We come up with different ideas about different activities, and um, we're getting smarter and more efficient yeah. with the system that we're entering in or that we've entered in at this point. And, um, you know, we'll just keep, we're, we're going to stay at it. And um, it, again, it's Adam's talking about, you know, our seniors overcoming the challenge. And I'm, I've talked about developing resiliency. Mm -hmm. and, and this is life. Mm -hmm. We all know this, but our kids are learning from this and our parents are going to help guide them through it. And we'll stick, we'll stick together, we'll get through it mm -hmm. together, and we'll come out on the other side. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I want to thank both of you for being here. Thank you so much for coming and talking to me. I, I'm going to end with probably the most difficult question. It's a hard one to hear. Um, I have dealt with the, uh, the barber shops being closed uh, <laughs> by becoming a 70s hippie. Yeah. And Looks I, good, by the way. Oh, thanks. Yeah. yeah. And Mike has dealt with it in his special yeah. way. Yeah. I uh, figured it out. You did. I guess you did. <laughs> Clean I, razor. That's yeah. cool. So uh, I'm seeing short hair there. How have you dealt with it? It was shorter two weeks ago, by the way, Doug. Um, I gave, uh, well, I'll be honest with you. Um, I don't like my hair to look like the 70s, even though I was. that's when I was born. And um, I gave, I bought a razor, uh, a clippers mm -hmm. from the store, and gave, handed them to my wife, and she looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> and she... Uh, Started to do it, and I said, you're right, you are crazy. Give those to my mother. And my mother kind of messed with it a little bit, and I would say it looks better today than it did two weeks ago. Uh, and then, for some reason, the word spread, and my brother found out, and he's like, hey, I need a haircut. And I was like, you're crazy. I'm not doing that. And he came over, and he's got some weird calic things, and I kind of messed around with it. And he's like, hey, this looks good. And then all of a sudden, my brother-in-law heard I was like, I say, I am not about to be the family uh, barber, but I'd be glad to come and do your hair. Um, hats work well, you know. Yeah, mine but curls out from under. No, I think I think there's a lot of good stuff we could do with that. I think it'd look good. I mean, really, go. really sharp. Uh, well, next I'm time you do your next, you know, yeah. cast and just say hair hair done by Adam. That, you know? I, I'll I'll we'll be sure to put that in there, man. <laughs> That'll work. Okay, guys, thank you so much for being here, and I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having Thanks, us. Thanks, Doug.